Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale C44-9W locomotive from Cotto. My model is decorated in Southern Pacific scarlet and gray speed lettering scheme. This is one of the retooled C44-9W models Cotto has released, with many improvements over the original version Cotto released in the 1990s. Cotto offers these models in three versions. According to the CottoUSA.com website, the current MSRP for a DCC Ready model is $195. The MSRP for a model with a non-sound DCC decoder is $260. The MSRP for the Kobo Shops custom version with ESU Loc Sound DCC and Sound is $395. I purchased my Kobo Shops unit in January 2016 for $235.99 for modeltrainstuff.com. Because my model is from 2016, it has a Loc Sound Select decoder installed. I would assume that Kato is using Loksound 5 decoders in new installations, but the website doesn't really say one way or the other. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The model comes in a cardboard box. A rigid foam cradle surrounds the model. A flexible plastic piece protects the fuel tank. Foam protectors help to keep the handrails from getting bent out of shape. Inside there's a quick reference guide with information about the sound decoder. A set of magnetic trip pins for the couplers is included, along with an instruction sheet with information about how to install them. One of the grab irons in the front of my unit is missing, along with one of the sets of air hoses on the rear plow. I've had this model for a while, and it might be my fault that the parts are missing, so I'm giving the engine the benefit of the doubt here. This is a very old-school box that is similar to the boxes Kato has been using for their HO scale locomotives since the 1990s. This box should provide adequate protection for storage and transport, so long as the model is in factory condition. Because the foam is relatively hard though, I wouldn't recommend it if fragile details are added later. Southern Pacific's Dash 944CWs, or C44-9Ws as they're often called, were delivered between May and December 1994. SP received 101 units, numbered 8100 to 8200. These were the first new GE six-axle units that SP had purchased since 1975. Many of these units lasted well beyond the UPSP merger in 1996. I found a photo of my unit, 8132, still with its original paint and number in 1995. A photo from 2002 shows the same locomotive in Union Pacific colors, numbered 9596, so it was repainted and renumbered sometime between those dates. Photos show UP9596 was still in service in 2018. I carefully compared the model to photos I found of the real SP8132 and all the basic details look to be correct. Kato even got some subtle variations in the shape of the snowplow right. The plow looks correct for 8132, with the large squared off cutout around the coupler on the engineer's side. Other SPC 44-9Ws had a different coupler cutout shape. The paint on the engine is opaque and thin enough to allow the detail on the shell to show through. The separation lines between the colors are sharp and the writing is crisp. The SP scarlet and gray look correct to my eye. Most of the tiny writing on the warning labels is legible with magnification. There are small voids in the large Southern Pacific lettering on the sides at the door seams where there would be gaps in the real units as well. Unlike some other modern models, there are no photo etched parts on this one. The grills on the sides of the long hood are molded in. A little weathering could help to give the impression of depth. The handrails are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to normal handling. Some of the stanchions are a little crooked, a common problem with plastic handrails. On the plus side, these handrails look more delicate and more to scale than the ones in the older Kato-9 units from the 1990s. The end handrails are actually made of multiple parts and molded in white and gray. This is clever, but unfortunately the handrails are all somewhat deformed and seem to resist any attempts to coax them into the right shape. Along with the crooked stanchions, this looks bad, so I'm taking five points. The ditch lights in front are in the correct location for SP. Some of the older Kato SP-9s had the ditch lights incorrectly located below the sill. The model has freestanding grab irons, an uncoupling lever, MU cables that look a little oversized, air hoses, and a snowplow. The cab has plastic sunshades, which are not as delicate looking as a photo etched brass part would be. Kato has updated the windshield with separately applied wipers instead of the molded on wipers that Kato put on their older Dash 9 models. The window glazing fits flush where appropriate and has nice gasket detail. In back, the model has more freestanding grab irons. Details on the rear pilot are similar to the front, minus the ditch lights and plow. I haven't found any photo evidence that SP-9 units had spare knuckle holders on the rear pilots when delivered. The spare knuckles are mounted on the trucks in most of the photos that I've seen. 
This isn't necessarily wrong, however, as it appears that at least some SP-9 units had the spare knuckles moved to the rear pilot after the UP merger. On top, the cab has more freestanding grab irons, and the antenna arrangement appears to be correct for the engine as built. The horn casting is in the correct location, though it looks a little crude compared to the horns on some other models. The large exhaust stack looks good, but the appearance could be improved with a little black paint in the bottom. The radiators don't have photo etched grills, but the illusion of depth is still pretty good. Kato has made some improvements to the area under the sill, though the detail is a little sparse. There is room to add more piping, air filters, and such with aftermarket parts. One area that Kato has not changed from their original C44-9W release is the side of the fuel tank with the air reservoirs. These are molded into the tank half and are not completely round. Some weathering and darkening of the area behind the tanks would help to convey the illusion of depth here. The trucks have separately applied brake lines. The axles do not have rotating end caps. All of the wheels pick up current and all the axles are powered. The factory speaker is located in the fuel tank. The overall level of detail on this model is not as good as recent offerings for Mathern and scale trains. Those Dash 9 models have photo etched grills and numerous small details that would have to be added to this model with aftermarket parts. Considering that the MSRP of this model is higher, it's not as good of a value for the money. I'm taking 5 points. The engine has plastic Kato knuckle couplers on both ends. The front coupler is at the correct height according to the KD height gauge. The rear coupler sags low, so I'm taking 5 points. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge, though the fit was slightly tight on a couple of the axles. There is no noticeable body wobble. The engine weighs 17.7 ounces. Drawbar pull peaked at 3.5 ounces on my force gauge. A lot of HO scale diesels pull in the 2.5 ounce range, so this is a good engine. I'm testing the engine on DCC. F0 turns the lights on and off. The headlights, ditch lights, and number boards come on when the locomotive is set to move forward. All the lights operate together and there is no ability to control them independently. The nose window also shows light through it. The rear light comes on when the model runs in reverse. At this price level, the model should have independent light control. Even back in 2016 when I bought it, a lot of other models had those features. I'm taking five points. The model starts and runs smoothly. F8 turns on the sound. F1 rings the bell. F2 sounds the horn. F4 triggers the dynamic brake sound. To take the engine apart, first I'll remove the coupler screws and draft gear boxes. Once these are out, the body will lift off the frame. The chassis is little changed from the original 1990s design. The low sound decoder is plugged into the factory light board. There are only two LEDs and light pipes carry the light from the front LED to the ditch lights, front headlight, and number boards. This would need to be changed to achieve independent light control. Fixing all that is beyond the scope of a product review, so for now I'm going to leave it alone. I'll replace the plastic factory couplers with KD-158s. The KDs drop right into the factory draft gear boxes. Unfortunately, the couplers droop and the height is very low. I filed the lip off a KD draft gear box and used that instead. Now the coupler height is just slightly low. I'll file the coupler mounting pad a little. Looks like that did the trick. Let's see what we've got. The handrails were crooked and the overall detail is not up to the price level of this model, so I took a total of 10 points in the paint and detail category. One coupler was low and the model lacks independent light control, so I took 10 points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 80 out of 100 possible points, a B- minus on a report card. In spite of a few issues, this model gets a green signal. Though it's starting to show its age, I think this is still a pretty good model from Kato. Especially if you're the type of person who wants a reliable mechanism with a proven track record, then I think you might like it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned and thanks for watching. <laughs>